We are from Chemical Containers. It's in Lake Wales. It's down by Fat Boys Barbecue and Oakley Trucking. It's been there for 40 years. We've been asked to come here to share our company, show you guys some things that are available out there. If you're thinking about doing something, think about it now. This man started this company with a handheld sprayer that you buy at Home Depot for $10. Now he's building trucks and it's just off the chain. He employs over a hundred people. His main office is in Lake Wales and he has satellite offices around the Southeast. This is our team. My name is Gary Bollier. I'm assembly supervisor in the truck department. I run everything that we do involving building these component wise. This is our team. This is Thomas King. He's electrical supervisor in the truck department. Anything that involves wiring, hooking up lights, the main power harness from the cab of the truck, Thomas and his people do it. Devin Cheek, he works directly under me. He's an assembly guy. He works in putting in the components in the truck along with his co-workers. His job is to make everything fit and it must operate correctly. I was born in Boise, Idaho. My dad spent 21 years in the military, so we traveled around. That's what he chose to do with his life. My first job was at Burger King. Believe it or not, when I set foot in there, I didn't even know where I was going. I was in seventh grade in a class called Work Experience. They taught us how to interview. They taught us how to look people in the eye, how to shake hands. We took tests and quiz about things employers would ask you as a person being interviewed. He drives up to the Burger King and it's like, this is where we're going? He goes, yep. And I walked in there, interviewed, and got the job. It wasn't that hard. I was 14 and they really don't care. But, you know, I was polite. I was 14 and I wanted a job. I worked there for three years. Saved up all my money. I started out at $3.10 an hour in 1983. Then when you get into pipe fitting, that's a step up from welder. Pipe fitting is actually connecting the systems. You got tanks, pumps, different rooms. You got to hook these systems up, run pipes through walls, all kinds of different things. That is what you call a journeyman job. My name is Thomas Keen. I am the electrical supervisor in our truck department. So anything electrical that we do on the trucks, I oversee, I operate. Majority of the time I build and have uh, my workers under me install. So I was born here. I was born in Winter Haven. My parents are from here. I've lived in Babson Park my whole life. I'm 28. Not going to lie to you. After graduating from a homeschool, I had no idea what I wanted to do. It was more socially awkward than anything, but um, had just no direction. No one really talked to me about what I wanted to do. No one gave me an opportunity like this to experience any kind of career opportunities that may have been out there for me. Um, I had a family member that worked at CCI. I talked to him, wound up going up, meeting the people. Uh, I got a part-time job there. That's how I started. I did inventory. So they would print out a sheet of where parts were supposed to be, how many parts we were supposed to have on hand, and that was my job to go through and count them. That's all I did for three days a week from seven to noon. I counted little spray tips and, you know, little nipples to connect pipe together. Um, after that, they saw I was doing pretty good at that. I moved to full time. I worked in our shipping and receiving department. I would get orders. I would send parts all over the country. You know, repairs need to be made when something breaks down, but we can't send a guy to California tomorrow to fix something. We'd have to send parts, you know, that way they could fix it in field. After that, I moved to our position that we call a back parts counter. It's for all the jobs that we build in-house. So I would uh, write down, gather up, make sure all of our parts got sent on the tickets and put electrically in order. That way it could get billed to the customer and no one was getting undercharged, overcharged. Everything was accounted for like it should be. Uh, after that, I worked my way into the electrical position. Had no idea anything about it. From there, I was trained and taught after many years and wound up working into the supervisor position where I am now. I build our control boxes that go into our trucks and I oversee all the installation of it. So we have, you know, complicated boxes where there's multiple timers, multiple fuses, relays, solenoids, switches, or we have basic stuff. You know, just little toggle switches in a small box. That's 
how I started and where I am now. I'm Devin Cheek. Uh, I was born in Gaylord, Michigan. Pretty much lived there all my life. Went there elementary school, high school until about 15, 16. Then my parents moved down to Florida where I graduated down here in Frostproof. Um, I didn't really want to know what I wanted to do when I get uh, got out of high school. So I said I was gonna join the military and did six years of that, became a decent mechanic. Worked uh, as a grease monkey pretty much my whole life. And then I got medically discharged, which was unfortunate. But as I was saying, uh, CCI is very family oriented. Uh, my father-in-law has been there for 25 plus years. Um, as for my application, um, met Gary in a uh, truck department. Kind of fell in love with just building trucks because I like putting things together and working on things. Um, everything you see in the picture, we build from the ground up, from bending the plates to cutting the holes, putting all the fittings together, hosing the hose reels out. Um, I love doing that and it's pretty fun. Uh, my life was pretty simple. I found one job, fell in love with it, got hurt, got out. Now CCI, probably gonna be where I'm gonna be at. Eventually take his job and make some more money. There you go. But yeah. Move up and move on. Yes, sir. This describes what we build, storing and applying liquids, chemicals, spray trucks, skids. Skids, anything that's portable. They can pick that up with a forklift, tote it anywhere they want. Some of these systems sit on a flatbed truck. Some customers like to have it on there, use it for what they call a season. You know, you're not mowing your grass in the winter, right? Well, they're not spraying fertilizer usually or anything else in the, in, in the winter. So he might use a system like that in the summer, take it off and then use the truck for something else. Some people like that capability. These other skids will be small units, pretty much the same thing. They're just on the ground showing you how they get moved around. These are the kind of jobs that our company or a lot of companies around the country look for if you're in construction or blue collar job. Fitters and fabricators and finishers, those are all specific jobs. Fitters is what I used to do. I used to work in the food grade industry, Florida's natural citrus plant. Finishers and installers, installers is pretty much what Devin does. He'll get a job ticket with the components involved. He'll get a can, get a somewhat diagram floor plan, then it's our job to fit everything in, make sure everything fits and works properly, and when it's done, it functions. Painters, we paint everything. Machinists, we have, it all starts there, usually. You gotta have something built. You gotta have things cut. You gotta have things drilled, lathed out. All these components that are made just for us to have a job. If you don't have the parts, you can't put it together. Yard crew is a guy that will get stuff out in the yard. We have 40 acres out there with tanks and everything laying around and his job is to go pick out the right piece that he needs off the ticket, brings it to the people who need it, it makes our job easier. The truck department which we work in, some of these are driven off by a professional driver or the guy that bought the truck will send one of his employees and he might come here sign the truck out, drive it to New Jersey. Or sometimes we put them on a flatbed truck and ship them, whatever the customer wants. Draftsman is where we really need help. We have a department where their job is to create drawings, record things. Sometimes we build things just from our knowledge. We figure it out, we lay it out, and then when it's done, we're trying to create a culture where it gets recorded so that if Simmons Lawn Care from Mississippi comes up and say, build this truck, I want a tree, high, high trees. If we build it, he comes back two years later, I want another truck. Well, we want a record of that. Why would we want to build his second unit to look different? So our goal is to make them look the same for the individual. These are, of course, the jobs that are related to the academy and the schools in this area. Reg will teach you all this. This is the kind of stuff we need. If you're a construction or any kind of assembly or blue collar jobs, all these trades are needed. If you like to stay in the office, you don't want to, you don't like building things or getting dirty, that's cool. Computer techs, learn computers. I know y'all know how to use your phone, right? Oh yeah, y'all can smoke most adults. Adults can barely turn them on sometimes. So you got computer tech that we need that involves programming these truck control systems. Drafting is drawing. You gotta learn how to draw things and make it make sense. This is some of the stuff we build. <clears throat> this is a roadside, we call it. Has boom arms on it. 
so he can articulate those arms, which means move around. He can stretch them out in any configuration he wants in order to reach stuff that he's spraying. He can control every spray head on there, individual gauge uh, pressure gauges on it. Control module, this is where we're talking about Thomas. This is all the control unit that runs that entire truck. And this is what the inside of this spray boom boxes look like right here. They have all these little nozzles on it. So electrical, we can go from simple toggle switches, two, three, to turn on lights, to this is a more complex design. We've actually got a timer system on the inside. So we'll bring incoming power off the battery of the truck, which is a 12 volt system. That's that's crucial to know when you're dealing with stuff like this, because you can send 12 volts to something, or you can put capacitors, you can put rectifiers, you can put voltage limiters on stuff. You can't send five volts to something that requires 12 volts, it just won't work. Uh, so we'll bring in 12 volts for this application. We send it to a fuse panel on the inside. So all of our, you know, all of our accessories are going to get brought in off of that. We have one incoming, and then we'll have pot potentially up to seven outgoing sources that we need to wire in. This one's only got three. We have th uh, two light bars in the roof. We've got two push buttons over on the side. And so what we'll do is we'll bring power in. We'll run it down to these circuit breakers to help protect the line if, for our hose reels. When our hose, hose reels are winding up, if they get locked up, that can cause an overload. If there's no protection on that circuit, electricity causes heat when it starts overloading. That wire will catch on fire, burn the truck to the ground. So there has to be protection set up in place. And all that stuff's just basic stuff you learn on the job. I didn't know what any of that stuff was when I started, but over time, learned it, learned how to protect an electrical circuit, you know, common stuff like that. So what you're looking here is just different uh, trucks that we build, has all the components in it. Once we're done, this truck is ready to go. We can send it anywhere, whoever's ordered it. Could be New Jersey, could be California. When the customer receives that truck, He'll probably have somebody already trained. He can jump in and it's ready to go. We do small trucks, different colors, as you can see. Some people have a color scheme that matches their name. That company's called Green Cross. Of course, they don't want the truck red, right? So we build these trucks and they're different styles. You're just going to see different styles. Of course, you see that. Some people chose those colors for some reason. Bright blue and black, but whatever. This is a very short one. This is one of my favorite jobs because it was so small and so compact. I had to figure all that out to make sure this guy wanted everything that we could possibly put in a truck, in that truck. And he wanted it short because he was going to get it in New York and put it on a ferry and go to Island. Oh, this is a saver tree truck. So when I first get this body, it's completely empty. And then we start by plumbing out these tanks first from 50 gallon tanks to 400 gallon tanks, 300 gallon tanks. And we start from the ground up, plumb it out, fittings. Uh, you'll see a little bit more outside. Uh, these fittings we plumb in there, hose reels start from just a plain empty hose reel rack, putting uh, what the welders build, uh, your hose reel bracket, mounts uh, the next one. All I use for mostly is a tape measure and mess with fractions most of the time. And all these ones, this is a common truck we build, Save a Tree. Um, have like set um, dimensions. There we go. Yes. Yeah, set dimensions. So everything's just plug and play. If you like to build like Legos or puzzles together, you definitely like this department. So if you see like white ones like these, these are custom builds. So a customer will have like kind of an idea of what he wants to build, and then we'll get like diagrams of how he wants to build it. But we can adjust some things and like make it our own, like little input onto. Uh, trucks they want. Right, right. Nothing set in stone in a custom. He may ask for a lot of stuff and we'll say, that's not going to fit in the truck you got. But Or we can move some stuff around. And then my favorite truck to build is a, a Bartlett. The pipe fitting that we get to do, like doing PVC piping, the measuring, and just actually like being able to put so much in uh, a small space is kind of like entertaining yeah. to me. And yeah, it's really cool. Of course, we have all major holidays off with pay. You know, most large companies do. He employs over 100 people. Health insurance, you got dental, you got vision. He pays 80% of your health care. 401k, whenever you start a job and as soon as you have an opportunity, if you want any advice at all, start. $5 a week, $10 a week, it doesn't matter. It's going to be by percentage. 1%, you can do 1%.
You could do 5%, 8%, whatever. Do it when you're young you just, and just forget about it. Comes out of your gross pay, it's untaxed, and it's there, and it grows quicker than you think. Anytime you leave a job, those are transferable. So you have a job and you start a 401k. Let's say you get out of high school and you come work for chemical containers. You're there five years and you decide, I want to do something else. Take the money with you, put it to your new job. Same thing. It just grows. You know, there's a lot of investment out there. Everybody has their opinion. Buy gold, buy silver. Yeah, that's good. Whatever. But when you look over history, the stock market, if the government allows it, is the most reliable. It might go up. It might go down. But once at the end of the day you look at it, the return is constant. You have to be patient. Don't worry about it, like if it goes down a little bit. Don't worry about it. We're focusing on when you're done working. If you're aggressive and you put a good amount of money in there and you can, you might have children, you only have so much money you can put in there, just do it consistently. By the time, you know, if you do well, maybe you retire at 55. Maybe you retire at 50. You don't have to be old to retire but you have to be prepared. The kind of things that any job would require, you gotta know some basic math. Here, me and Devin work with numbers. You gotta cut something, you gotta measure it. You gotta know how to read a tape measure. All that stuff should be learned in school by now. Fractions, whole numbers, subtraction. It's not, you know, we're not talking about trigonometry. You gotta be on time at work. If you're not on time, you're constantly late, all you're doing is disrespecting your employer. That's all you're doing. You're telling him you don't care. And he's not going to care because he's going to run you out the door. Here at CCI, it's very important. That is, that is pushed down for me from the top. My people will be on time. And then we have a culture where it's documented. We're patient. We understand things happen. Man, I had a flat. Okay. Well, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about you're late because you overslept and you're lazy. We work with you. Any job you take, you got to be punctual. Be flexible. You're going to do a particular job, you might be asked to do a little something else. Did you see it? A little something else. Consider it as an opportunity to learn. The more you know, the more you earn. Knowledge is power. Stay out of trouble, man. If you get in trouble, things happen. You know, CCI doesn't have the culture. Well, oh, okay. Well, you got in trouble once. No, that ain't what we're talking about. Just stay out of trouble, man. You know the right thing to do. You got to be trainable. That means you got to be listening. You got to take criticism. And if you do something right, you're going to get rewarded. You're going to, hey, man, nice job, man. Nice thinking. Everybody doesn't think of the same thing. You learn from everybody. Sometimes you just don't see it right away. But pay attention, learn. You're at the age where you can get hired now. Experience is what you need. Doesn't matter what you do. You can work in a little restaurant, help a guy cut grass, help people paint, it doesn't matter. But you need to start getting your experience now. By the time you're an adult, they expect to see that you've done something.